views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Angel Healing House Radio. My name is Claire Candy Hoff. Through my business, Angel Healing House, which can be found at angelhealinghouse.com. I'm a writer and an author, an international radio host, a Reiki master teacher, and an angel practitioner. My inspirational books entitled Angels of Faith and One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness and my autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, are based on my recollections of our life in spirit, and they help us to remember our divine, eternal natures. Through Angel Healing House, I help people to let go of sadness, anger, bitterness, resentment, and regret that has kept them locked in the prison of the past, and I help them to let go of worry, stress, and control which has kept them focused on an imagined future. And once they are no longer living in the past or the future, they can start to live in the present moment, which is the only place that they can experience synchronicities, miracles, and magic. As an angel practitioner, I help people to see their lives from a higher perspective with the help of an extraordinary group of angels who call themselves the Posse of Angels. Just like my angelic family, the Posse of Angels, I'm very excited to take some of your calls for that free angel advice. You can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819. But before we get to those callers, welcome everyone to Angel Healing House Radio. You know, I'd like to start the show with an absolutely beautiful testimonial that I received from one of my angel readings. And it reads, I recently had the most incredible angel reading with Claire Candy Hoff and the Posse of Angels. I left with a smile on my face and feeling so much love, clarity, upliftment, and empowerment. I felt encouraged to continue to follow my heartfelt intuition. I've experienced some amazing breakthroughs in my life, especially with loved ones, since my angelic experience with Candy. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that comes from Terrell in San Diego, California. Now, there's just a reminder that for only six more days in September 2019, these revealing and absolutely inspirational angel readings are heavily discounted. They're only $100 for 60 minutes. Now, my sessions, which include looking into the Akashic Records, intuitive counseling, they're very in-depth. They're normally $400 for two hours. Uh, these $100 sessions uh, in the month of 20, uh, 2019, September 2019, um, can be um, prepaid and scheduled uh, uh, in the next six days. Uh, you might want to find out more direction, clarity, empowerment, um, self-love, forgiveness, and peace. Call this number after uh, my program, which is 831 277 Three seven one six. That's the number for Angel Healing House, or you can email me at Candy C A N D Y at angelhealinghouse dot com. Remember, it's only for six more days. Now today's show is entitled "On the Other Side of Courage Is Miracles." And it flows on beautifully from last week's show, which was entitled Expect the Unexpected. 
And if you missed that one, all of my archive shows are on the Transformation Talk radio site and uh, on my host page, Claire Candy Health host page. And uh, they all have different titles and you can go on there any date, any day, any time. Now, it's interesting how our lives evolve. And most times, it totally astounds me as to what I think is going to happen in contrast to what actually divinely happens. For instance, at the end of 2011, this is one of the most extraordinary stories in my life. I was thinking about different ways to promote my business, Angel Healing House, which, by the way, I started in uh, in 2003. So I'm celebrating my 16th year. Um, but I was thinking about different ways to promote my business and uh, to make it known to more people. And as I was considering an all-out, very expensive advertising campaign, and I was thinking about joining more business networking groups, I tuned in for help from my angelic family, the Posse of Angels. And uh, they told me once again that I would be doing radio, but not radio. Now, this message, radio, but not radio, had been following me for years. And now this was almost 2012, as this message started coming to me in 2008. Yet, since that time, I hadn't a clue as to what they were talking about. And so I told them that when the timing was, was right, to give me more signs as to how to proceed with their rather cryptic message. Well, on January 2012, I woke on New Year's Day and I felt this great urgency to connect with more people. I received a random, a random in quotes email from LinkedIn asking me if I'd updated my connections recently. Well, I was still in my pajamas six hours later and I was sending out invitations and messages of introduction for people to connect with me. In the following days, I received a very clear message from the Posse of Angels to get a psychic reading. And I laughed at them, and I reminded them that I was psychic and that I would not pay for a psychic reading. Well, my response fell on their deaf ears because they just kept hounding me over the next week and their message to get a psychic reading kept on getting louder and louder. So finally, I rather reluctantly said that I would follow their advice. Now, having connected with many people on LinkedIn, I decided to look through all of their profiles to see if any of these psychics resonated with me. After shuffling through page after page, I clicked on my connection with a gentleman by the name of Psychic Jethro. As soon as I saw his face, I received a shower of shivers all up and down my arms and legs. I immediately called his, connect, his contact number and immediately he answered. Although the words were hard for me to say, I asked him, <clears throat> how much do you charge for a reading? And this is his exact, was his exact response. Whoa, look at all the angels surrounding you. I've never seen someone with so many angels. Hold on. My guides are saying you are an angel and that you are one of them. You want a reading? I can't charge you for a reading. Hold on. I'm hearing the words radio but not radio. Hmm, do you do radio? I have a radio program on Blog Talk Radio, and I take calls for free angel readings. Would you like to co-host my program this coming Tuesday and take free angel readings with me from callers? Astounded. I heard myself say, <clears throat> why, yes, of course. Three days later, after one, everyone, I was co-hosting Jethro's show and taking callers. 
As soon as I was on the air, there was not one shred of nervousness, and I felt an overwhelming feeling of comfort and familiarity. You know, I loved it so much that the very next day, I established my Angel Healing House radio radio program on Blog Talk, and at the end of the month, at the end of January 2012, I began hosting my own show. You know, I guess from an angel's point of view, I figured out that internet radio is not traditional radio. And in their words, it's radio, Mm, but not radio. Now, the posse of angels told me from the start that I was not to have any guests but that each weekly hour show would be 30 minutes of channeled information and the the other 30 minutes would be taking um, callers. As of this writing, I've been hosting my radio program for almost eight years. And the Posse of Angels and I have now channeled over 400 shows. Having created the show, it has taken Angel Healing Out house out to a global audience as I've received callers and emails from places like Jordan, Ireland, England, Scotland, France, Brazil, Italy, Spain, Peru, Australia, India, and many other countries who've been able to find and connect me through my radio, but not radio, Angel Healing House radio program. You know, everybody, that story of how I started Angel Healing House was a perfect example of today's show, The Courage to Create Miracles. You know, if left to my own limited way to promote my business, you know, I might have joined more networking groups or paid someone to put together an advertising campaign for me. But the posse of angels is saying that although I was ready unconsciously to step up to a wider audience and be recognized on a a, um, larger platform, it would never have dawned on me to consciously create something that took me beyond my one-on-one healing sessions. If left to my own devices, I would have kept myself small, unchallenged, doing the same things that I had always done from 2003 to 2012. Now, looking back on my international audience that I've created since January 2012, I could never have imagined going out so far into the world. The reach was so wide that it, that unbeknownst to me, it created an international platform to showcase my two novels, my novel, One True Home, Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness, and the sequel to that novel, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, the autobiography of Angel Ariel. So it created a platform so large that those two books went, uh, achieved in 2017, number one Amazon international best-selling status in the USA, UK, Canada, Australia, and Germany. To have my two novels reach number one international best-selling status was truly my dream come true. And when the Posse of Angels nudged me, they nudged me to create Angel Healing House radio program eight years ago, I truly had no idea that this would become the international platform that I was building to launch my future novels. So thank you. Thank you to my beloved angelic family, the Posse of Angels, for being so clever and knowing what is best for me. They want me to remind you that your angels, your spirit guides, know you better than you know yourself. The posse of angels, here they come. (laughs) They're jumping in here and they're emphatically assuring us 
that we were never, ever supposed to figure out life on our own. If this were the case, life would be just too hard. It would be and cause us downright frustration and unending irritation. They've witnessed countless humans who take it upon themselves to constantly push and control and force things to happen only in a certain way. And the outcomes they derive from this are many. They derive stress, <laughs> tension, exhaustion, worry, and many times emotional and physical unwellness. So the Posse of Angels wish to make it very clear what our role is in creating and manifesting the fulfillment of our wishes. Our role, which is truly the engine that is driving all manifestation and creation, is our intentions, our dreams, and our desires that we hold very dear and close to our hearts. Being clear about what we intend for our lives is like making a wish list. Once we make out this wish list, we can then basically set it aside and forget it. By the way, this is what I did five years ago when I stated to the universe, I am a best-selling international author. At that stage, you know, it was then that I didn't start looking for a publisher or a literary agent, but I surrendered how the, how the heck this was going to happen, and I allowed God to take over the details. We can forget our wish list because every time we've wished and pleaded and begged and cried and asked for anything to manifest in our lives, something magical happened. Immediately upon the mere utterance of our stating our intentions, which creates an energy it appears in the etheric realm, in heaven, across the veil. No questions asked, no pushing, no forcing. It just appears. And the posse of angels wish to know, that wish for us to know, that there are some reasons for this. Firstly, unlike the physical plane, there simply is no time in heaven. When we are across the veil, as I have spoken of and written very ex extensively in my book, One True Home, Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness, we stop living in the energies of limitation and drop the restrictive illusion of duality. We are then fully able to reconnect to our powerful, unobstructed, divine, eternal natures. It's from this high vibrational vantage point that we radiate the same matching, abundant, high-frequency energies uh, as uh, frequency as the universe. And voila, instant manifestation. Manifestation happens easily for us because we live in a gracious universe and the universe desires what each and every one of us desires. But in order for our wishes and intentions to appear on the physical plane, our energetic frequency must be clear. It must be bright. It must be at the highest level in order for it to be in energetic alignment with the frequencies of the universe. And the Posse of Angels, they're emphasizing that nothing will close the doors of manifestation faster than A, holding on to an expectation and attachment, trying to force and figure out the how and the when of the universe uh, needs, needs to or should to fulfill our dreams and intentions. And the second is B, if we hold any energy of doubt, disbelief, um, disbelief in ourself or an outcome or fear, that we are not able to realize a dream. And even though people have wonderful intentions, they stop themselves from experiencing the full quotient of their lives because they just simply choose not to live courageously. You know, 
when a client ordered my books, she shared with me that her guides, now she was very, very intuitive, very psychic. She knew that her guides and angels had been badgering her for 10 plus years to write a book. And while she had made bullet points and, you know, written a very small amount, she said that she stopped because she needed a ghostwriter to finish the book because she wasn't a writer. She also said that she was adamant that she only wanted it to be released by a major publishing house because she didn't want the headache of self-publishing it. I told her that the Posse of Angels were very vocal. They were saying that the reason she was so adamant about her book only being published by a major publishing company was in order to sabotage it from ever being seen as she lacked the courage and she was fearful with the topic of the book about putting the book out in public. And she believed with all of her heart that it would never be picked up by a major publishing company. They also reminded her that she was driving herself absolutely crazy and wasting her valuable energy by wondering, how should I promote the book? How should I market it? How should I advertise the book? Even before the book was ever written. You know, I've been asked by countless people over the past 16 years how to move forward in their lives. And the answer that the Posse of Angels and I share was to courageously follow the creative joy, their passion, the playfulness and the fun, enthusiasm and excitement within themselves. Each one of my five books, I have three in print and I have two audio books, which by the way, One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness is coming out very soon this fall on audible.com. So each one of my five books, um, since I brought out, were created with joy, passion, fun, with no other expectation or agenda. There was another Uh, A a client asked about her recent joining of a networking group. Now, this was another client and how it had not yielded the five new clients per week that she set as a goal to achieve. Well, the reason this had not worked out for her is that she attaches and holds expectations for the business networking group to do this for her. This is her only agenda. And she didn't sound as if she was happy and giddy to join the group for fun or to meet and play with others. Now, the Posse of Angels is sharing with us that if the universe so much as picks up one iota, one teeny little sliver of energy that is attached to an agenda, pushing, forcing, or controlling an unexpected outcome based on what our linear logical minds think will happen instead of having fun and passionately creating for creation's sake, it will read this as hard work or it'll read it as a chore that we should, ought to, and have to do. And in these clear, bright, higher energies, It will shut it down and put up blocks for us at an alarming rate. Remembering that before 2012, we were in the Piscean Age. That was all about doing, pushing, forcing. And if if a few words could describe it, I do. Therefore, I am. You know, it was the age of reason and logical thinking. But we've gone beyond that. We've gone beyond that into fifth dimensional living where we operate differently as our manifestations are answered through our hearts, through our being, our joy, imagination, inspiration, abundant energies. Now the Posse of Angels are assuring us that no matter how much something may have worked out in the past, like those business networking groups, 
it is not generated in these ways. Uh, and if it's not generated in this joy, then our lives will cease to flow with ease and grace. You know, it is amazing how many spiritual teachers that have come to me whose hearts are still closed down as they are stopping themselves from manifesting in the physical reality uh, and what um, that which they are teaching to others. It's amazing, you know, that they're talking the talk but they haven't started to walk the walk. And so much of our lives, ease and flow, will be dictated by how much we have the courage to be the powerful creators on the planet. And the way that all creative and co-creative manifestation happens now is by each one of us believing in ourselves, taking inspired action, and by creating. For it is the passionate, joyous energies of creating that will easily draw to us opportunities and connections to support and our creations. I've often said that it's no good planning your international um, book tour when you haven't even written a single word yet. Whether it's a book within you that you are aching to, to write or an inspirational feeling to work in TV, creating a business, inventing a new app, writing a song, making a film. Each one of us has been endowed with very unique, beautiful energies. But we need, when those signs are given to us, we need to take inspired action. You know, the Posse of Angels is reminding us that the real failure comes when we hold ourselves back and we never attempt to fly with the wings that God gave us. God never gives us anything that we can't do. And he, she has seeded an urge and inspiration in our soul. If this is it, it means that we're going to be called to create and bring forth something and that on the other side of our courage always lies open doors and miracles of rewards. So if you've got an urge to do something, then really take note of that and get allow yourself to get excited about it. You've been listening to me, Claire Candy Hoff, on Angel Healing House Radio. Uh, we are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we are going to take some of your calls for the, the free angel advice. You can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819. We'll see you after this quick break. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Have you discovered the remarkable books at angelhealinghouse.com? Author Claire Candy Hoff has channeled rare books of inspiration and insight. Angels of Faith is an inspiring story of healing, comfort, and hope that reminds us that death is not to be feared, but embraced with joy. One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness takes readers on a roller coaster ride through Angel Ariel's five most important lives on Earth, as well as her experiences in the afterlife, and helps us remember our own journey across the veil. And Claire Candy's autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk In, which details the 2003 soul exchange that took place when Claire Candy walked out of her body and Angel Ariel walked in, creating heaven on Earth for herself and others. To find out more about these wonderful books, visit angelhealinghouse.com today. Hello, everyone. You're back with me, Claire Candy Hoff, on Angel Healing House Radio. Angel Healing House Radio airs every week. 
at 9 a.m. here on Transformation Talk Radio on Tuesdays. Um, uh, just a reminder that I've, off- I've also started a Facebook Live TV on Thursdays at 10 a.m. And that show is called Views from My Balcony. And... Uh, views from my balcony because it's a little bit more informal and uh, we speak about all kinds of subjects. You can join the chat on that uh, on that views from my balcony show. So I would love to interact with you on Thursdays at 10 a.m. Do remember that uh, on Angel Healing House Radio, um, I take callers for free angel readings. So you can call in on 1-800-930-2819 chat with myself and uh, get an angel reading uh, with myself and the posse of angels. Now, before we get to those callers, I would like to um, uh, tell everyone that uh, with our um, topic today on the other side of courage is miracles, when I shuffled my animal spirit cards to see which animal who would come out to give us a little bit extra um, um, insights into how we can use these energies, who should come in but the lordly lion. Beautiful. I love, love, love these cards. There is the beautiful lion. Now, the lion has a commanding presence, and it's all about self-mastery. His ability to be observant and stealth in translating his inner desires into precise action. Well, it gives him an air of supreme assuredness, never questioning himself, and the courage to be who he is. Now, this courage translates for us to be ourselves is a very strong message as this self-mastery that the lion possesses is also available to each and every one of us. His outward appearance of peace and strength. It doesn't mean that his heart is not pumping when he's chasing down a water buffalo or an elephant who could both very easily kill him while defending their lives. No, his courage doesn't mean that he doesn't get afraid. But his courage means that he does not allow his fear to stop him. Everyone, it takes a great deal of courage to be ourselves and to go after and realize our dreams simply because those dreams are ours. So thank you, Lordly Lion, for coming in. And now you can go. Bye. Thank you to Mr. Lion. Also, I need to remind everyone that we just experienced the fall equinox here yesterday on September 23rd. Um, And, of course, in the Southern Hemisphere, where all my dear Aussie family and friends are, they're springing forward. But here we are experiencing the fall equinox, and it is a time of harvest. It's truly a time of reaping all that we have sown. And along with the change in our physical sites here in the U.S., the leaves are changing in many parts of the U.S. And the shells of the stores are starting to display pumpkins and witches and hay bales. Not to mention everything is now spiced with uh, spiced muffins, coffees, air fresheners. We are either consciously or unconsciously entering a time of change. Please, with the changing of the seasons, whether it's in the northern or the southern hemisphere, please do take time. Take time to look back on the past year. Look back on your life so that you can start to plan your future for 2020. And the good part about all this is that the planet's energies are supporting this. With the planet's Jupiter, uh, which many of you know, is the planet of luck, expansion, and good fortune. And Saturn, which is the very hard taskmaster planet, which has been retrograde since April, which has stalled our projects, which has really slowed us down, 
it's a great, and that's gone forward as of last week. It's a great time for forward movement and actioning your dreams. Also coming at the end of the week is the new moon on September 28th. And it's in my sign, Libra, as my birthday on October 7th is coming up, which Libra is the one of the most partnership-oriented signs as we are constantly seeking out balance and diplomacy. So with partnerships being highlighted, we may receive major insights into how we partner, whether that's through business or um, through our careers. After experiencing that very hard full moon in Pisces, which was heavy and it was emotional, it made us somewhat confused, we do get a reprieve as this new moon is going to feel more exciting and more social and lighter. Now, this lighter energy of the new moon is partially due to Libra's ruling planet being in Venus. And being Venus all about beauty, it's making romance and love and aesthetics and beauty more important now. You may feel flirty, you may feel fun, and you may feel more playful. So certainly lighter energies at this harvest time to take us in to October. Remember that you can call in for a free angel reading with myself and my angelic family, the Posse of Angels on 1-800-930-2819. Let's go to our first caller. We have Stephanie from New York. Hi, Stephanie. How are you? Hi. Hi. Thanks. How are you? I'm very well. Um, what Happy, happy harvest. <laughs> happy Libra season. Happy so many things as we go into this season of change. <laughs> Thank you. Same to you. What's um, been going on with you? Not, well, I have a biopsy coming up tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So that's been on my mind. And then fertility stuff has been on my mind. I was just realizing how like a year ago I was so convinced I'd be able to have a child. But now... I'm not sure if I, like a uh, doubt has crept in and um, just struggling with feelings for an ex-boyfriend and also it was my birthday last week so I didn't know if there was like something coming up so like I wasn't really sure there were so many things kind of swirling around in my mind so oh, okay well we'll see whatever what... I guess they feel is yeah that I need to hear yeah, that, that's most important. Um, first of all, while I'm shuffling the cards, they're, they're saying that you have made tremendous strides because even uh, mentioning these things, there's not, uh, there's not the past uh, triggers or reactions uh, that, that this would have undermined your energy. Uh, you're, you're thinking about it more than having it deeply uh, disturb your peace within yourself. Um, they want to remind you that uh, that everything is being done for your highest good, and um, and you know that uh, you're right on track with things. So never think that there's anything untoward or anything. If you were not able to conceive a child, it's hard to believe from our li- limited logical mind that this was for our best now it could be uh and this is me and not the posse of angels but it could be because uh your health was compromised at that stage and if you did become pregnant then there might have been something untoward with the pregnancy and so you were actually being protected and you were being you know um uh, saved in some way from uh, from an outcome that may not be, have been for your highest interest. So that's an important thing to remember. Um, let me see. Let's go to the cards and see what comes out for our lovely Stephanie. The first card that comes out for you is the Three of Wands. Now, this is you with uh, an expectant. Um, uh, an expectant air as you are waiting for the results of this biopsy. Now, they're saying that, of course, the posse of angels would never tell you 
whether this is going to go well or whether it's not going to go well. Um, as you know, as I'm holding the pendulum and it's just going round and round and round in a circle. Um, what you can do, what you can do is you can send your biopsy event beautiful green healing light. And you can send this emerald green light to yourself because this will bring you peace. This will bring you the strength or the courage as we are speaking about courage today. And this will bring you that calm state to go through uh, and this biopsy. Um, then you can send unconditional love, the energy of unconditional pink waves of love to this situation. Um, this will uh, definitely, definitely um, make your energies more peaceful, more loving, more accepting of whatever comes um, instead of uh, diminishing your energies. And believe me, at this stage, you need all of your energies to be able to, you know, to go through that. So uh, the next card that's coming out for you is the lover's card. Now, you said like, that you were thinking about an ex-boyfriend? Yeah. If you could, uh, in what regard? Um, well, he's an ex from actually a long time ago, but I keep on and off through the years thinking about him, but I just, and, um, and I realized yesterday that when I started having trouble, hello, Stephanie, you there? Looks like we lost Stephanie. Oh, try to get her back. Okay. Hopefully we can get Stephanie back. Um, uh, I, what, uh, what I was speaking about with Stephanie was that uh, she was telling me about an ex-boyfriend um, that, uh, uh, that had come to mind recently. So let's see if we can get Stephanie to reappear. Uh, do remember that um, Angel Healing House Radio, uh, here we take callers for free angel readings. So you can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819. In the meantime, while we are waiting for Stephanie, um, I was speaking about the harvest. I was speaking about this amazing, very magical time where we are will reap what we have sown. Um, and that is, that is coming back to us. And this is wonderful if we have uh, sown our... Um, our harvest or our, our garden, if you would, with love, with kindness, with forgiveness. It's never to, and you know, I've heard from many people say, well, what if I haven't do, done that? What if I was angry? And what if I was, you know, um, um, very, you know, um, reactive? It's never too late. It's never too late to put out those energies of love. We do have Stephanie back. Stephanie, you're on the line once again. Are you there? Yeah, hi. I don't know what happened before. Oh, that's um, okay. That's okay. You were about to tell us about your your ex-boyfriend and how uh, how long ago was it and uh, why do you think that's coming back? Um, we broke up, I think, 25 years ago. So it's been a while. And the year that we broke up, it was when I was in Scotland, and that's when I first started to have some issues with my period. Mm -hmm. And when we were together, we used to talk about having children and stuff. So, I, and I just sort of feel this connection to him. So I've wondered if, you know, there's there's some connection between my health issues and maybe not being with him or something. And I, you know, I'm surprised that I feel such a strong connection to him and still like think about him and stuff like that, even though we weren't in a very happy relationship when we were together. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to ask you, uh, is he, has he crossed over? 
Um, well, that's something I've been worried about because um, he contacted me about a year ago saying that his heart was running at 25%. Right. With, he has, like, AFib now. Mm-hmm. And the doctor didn't want him to do anything that he loves to do. But he was going to die young, and he wasn't going to lie down like a dog, and he was going to do these things anyway. Mm. So as far as I know, he's alive and well, but I feel like something could happen at any time, and I guess I worry about that, and I right. wonder if I should reach out to him. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> it, it, either feels, it either feels like he has already passed or that his health is so diminished that, you know, when we do get to uh, the the end of our lives, our soul goes, you know, like in and out, you know, trying on like a new, like a new coat. Um, So he might, you know, be for some appreciable amount of time out of the body, you know, that kind of thing. And I did get, I did get a very strong soul connection between the two of you and that he is going to, um, if he hasn't passed already, Um, When he does, he's going to be of tremendous help for you on the other side. I do pick up that you and he um, were uh, were, uh, in the same situation in another life. Um, And it was back then uh, that you were not able to have children. Um, Is this true? Yeah. And... um, so it's it's like this this is coming full circle for for you again. Um so that's the that's the love connection that's coming in. Um but um as per your surgery, uh you've got the chariot card here. And the chariot card is is speaking about making movement forward. Um more than telling you whether or not this is going to be um, a positive or negative, they're saying that you, you have triumphed over yourself. And either way, you're going to be able to um, accept the results and that you're going to go beyond this. Um, I have these beautiful cards here that I received recently. Um, they're the guardian angel. The, um, sorry, they're... Um, Archangel Gabriel cards, and the Archangel Cape is, is the Archangel Gabriel is the Archangel of communication. So let's see what these cards have to say. Um, they're saying, please keep yourself at peace. I don't know if you can do any rituals. Maybe take a salt bath. Maybe put rose petals in it. Maybe put on some beautiful music, light candles. But the more that you can be. Um, soft and yielding and receptive uh this will this will bode and keep you very well for whatever happens uh tomorrow i don't know if you're able to do those things but that will really help you enormously okay let's go and see what comes thank you and you said surgery did we mean just the like the biopsy like it's just an in-office thing as far as i know all right, so so what you were speaking about, the biopsy. Yeah, but they do advise a surgery, like a hysterectomy, or at least they did last year. So mm. was, did you say surgery because you were maybe confused about what I was saying before? Yeah, yeah. It's, it, no, it's, okay. a bi- it's, a, it's a biopsy. Okay. Okay. I don't, I don't know whether you keep a journal. Do you keep a journal about, your, about your, what you're feeling? Um, on and off, yeah. Okay. Well, they want you to they want you to start doing that again, because that helps you enormously. Um, because okay. of the of the continual worry that you know you're going back and forth and back and forth and um, and this is just you know that energy is just undermining undermining you you knowing that you you need to really let go uh the first card that came out to you is self-care is nurturing yourself so that's what i was speaking about with salt baths and beautiful rose petal baths and you know okay so self-care so this was nurturing yourself with self-care see see yourself in in that perfect light um 
you know, say, I am healthy, um, I am protected, and I will be guided, you know, everything is happening in divine order. The next is, oh, the card, this is the card that says, keep going, use the energy of any doubt or disappointment to fuel, to fuel you. So it's, it's the keep going card. Um, and they're saying, Every time that, you know, you do doubt, bring it back to, I know that I am more loved and cherished and adored than I can possibly ever imagine. And uh, your last card is letting go. Release the desire to control the situation and leave it up to God's infinite wisdom to resolve everything beautifully. So it's really amazing, those three cards about nurturing yourself, self-care. The second one is about keep going and letting go. So I hope that's been helpful for you, Stephanie. I'm uh, sending you extra energy, extra energy of courage. And as always, I'm sending you lots of love. Thank you. Um, and do they have any advice, like, if I did call to say goodbye or to check in with my ex, like, Anything to say in particular, if he's still alive? Well, well they're, they're saying that it wouldn't hurt um, if it's with the right intentions of just of, of just love. You know, I said this to a, um, a client this past week. She asked exactly the same thing. And I said, you know, she said, well, I don't want to romantically start anything again, but he keeps coming to mind. And I said, if you just um, connect... Uh, and with a, with a Facebook post or perhaps with a um, an email or something, and just say you've been coming to mind lately, coming to my mind and heart lately, and I just wanted to see if you were okay and just to connect, reconnect with you. Um, either you'll get a response or you won't get a response, but you'll send it with the right intention. So there you go. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. All right. Everything. Have a beautiful day. Take care, Stephanie. Bye-bye. Thank you, too. Bye. And with just a few moments left, uh, let us go to the cards, and I will pull some cards for this week. Um, a happy birthday to all those Librans as the 24th to, I think, uh, the 20, of course, the 23rd, I think, uh, encompasses Libra birthdays. I know I'm getting very excited about my birthday coming up on October 7th. I'm like a big, uh, a, a big little kid when it comes to wiggling and getting excited about my birthday. I've always seen my birthday as not so much as, as getting older. You know, lots of people say, oh, I don't want to remember my birthday, you know, it just makes me older or whatever. But I see it as a celebration of the divine eternal nature within myself and that um, myself, just like everyone else, was created by that divine reflection of God. And, uh, and I choose to be playful and wiggly and happy um, and joyous and abundant. Um, and that's what usually shows up in my reality, strangely enough, because of the laws of attraction. So this week, knock, 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 we're going to pull some cards and see what can, what's going to come out. You know, a lot of us that have let go, a lot of us that have, uh, you know, aligned ourselves with L show me how to be of best service are going to be moving on. We're going to be moving on with our careers. We're going to be moving on in jobs. We're going to be moving on um, where we live. We are going to be drawing to ourselves a new soul tribe, uh, a new soul family, if you want to call it that. That, um, uh, that is going to help support, um, um, not only support us, um, but promote us and encourage us. And uh, we will be presented with new opportunities um, and that will take what we've done, our skills, our abilities and talents, and then we'll be able to step into something new. You know, uh, we might be a little bit fearful about it, but it won't stop us from moving forward. Do not, do not have it stop you from moving forward because 
you are going to love it and it was divinely created for you. Um, if you want to learn more about that, I have an archive show called uh, The Third Mission of Lightworkers. This is the third mission that you're stepping into. So the first card that came out for us is the fool. Ha-ha! This is the card of the childhood innocence starting on a new journey. Whee! They're jumping over the horse, the rider, and the dog. They're jumping over streams with great enthusiasm. So love the fool card. He's anything but a fool or she's anything but a fool because they know that the voice of God is speaking through them and that they will be led. Allow yourself to be led. Next card is the strength card. Look at the, look at the similarities in these two cards. They're, they're jumping over the streams. Horses in the tarot are about our personal power. Wow. So if something is presented to you, know that you have all the strength that you need to do whatever is presented to you. And the next card that is coming out for us is the Page of Pentacles. And this is a message, a communique about new abundance coming in our lives, about new relationships, new finances, new material things, new opportunities, many of us in our careers or jobs. So it's a very, very exciting time. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you to my caller, Stephanie. Thank you, everybody who refers, recommends Angel Healing House and spreads the word. Do remember that Angel Healing House is on at Tuesdays at 9 a.m. here on Transformation Talk Radio. And I also have my show uh, on Facebook Live, Views from My Balcony. And remember, everyone, do remember to fashion an absolutely beautiful life for yourself this week. I'm wishing you as always love and angel blessings and have the courage to step forward when you're presented with something. Lots of love everyone. Take care. Bye. Mm-hmm.